Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. In previous episode, we learned how the very basic assembly program looks like. In this one, we are going to learn about the stack, loops and systems calls. So in the next episode, we will be able to write our own simple shellcode. Let's get started. OK, so we are going to write two very simple programs. The first program, let's call it two underscore basics and the same extension. In this program, we are going to define the list of the numbers, a very short one, simple, and we are going to reverse the sequence of the numbers on this list. So we are starting in the same way, section, and that this is a data, and then we define the list. The variable name can be a list, it doesn't matter, it's not the special keyword in the assembly, and the DQ. And the numbers of the list are, let's say, 1, 3, 5, and 7. So this is our list. And we are going to reverse the sequence of those numbers. The second section, which we define, is, of course, text, where we are going to write our main program. And then we specify our function main. So in our case, start. And let's start writing our program. Start writing from the end, so we will do the same as in the previous episode, we will start by defining the exit call so the program can end properly, and syscall 60, so this is the end of the program. In order to reverse, reverse the, the sequence of the numbers in our list, we will use something what is called stack. Stack is the place in the memory where we can put different variables. To be more precise, we can push them to the stack. Our idea is to put the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7 on the stack. First 1, first 3, then 3, then 5, then 7, and then start popping them up from the stack in the reverse sequence. So the first number we are going to grab from the stack will be 7, then we are going to grab 5, 3, and 1. So we are going to grab them from the stack in the reverse order that we are going to push them on the stack. In, and this way, if we will save those numbers back to the list, we will save them in the reverse order. But let's see how it looks like, like and learn, let's learn a couple of new concepts. And then we will write a simple hello world program. OK, so at the beginning, how the simple loop looks like in the assembly, the simplest version we can call it push loop can looks in the following way this is definition of our loop and this is information to the assembly to please repeat our loop so please jump back this is jump back to the loop so whatever code is located in this loop it will be repeated multiple times okay so how the assembly can knows how many times to repeat that loop the simplest way to tell assembly how many times it's to move that number to the register rcx and we want to put the number four we want to put the number four because this is going to be the loop which is going to go which is going to go through the list and there is a four elements on the list so we want to repeat a list four times now in the loop what we want to do is we want to move a one by one element from the list to the register cpu register we can use a first register and then every element it's a 60 64 bits on the list so we want to push quart from the list depends which element it is we want to change the address of it the address which we are reading this is eight bytes multiplied by some variable we can use the register rdx we are now going to initiate the rdx and explain that line once again at the beginning our rdx register is having the value zero so in the first interaction of that loop we are going to move to the register rax the first element of the list because r the x is zero so we are going to move the first element of the list to the r a x registry then we are going to increment this register so the register value is going to have a value one in the next interaction we are going to grab the second value from the list so the value three 
and once we grab the value what we want to do we want to push it to the stack push the value in the register rax and that's the whole loop which should be run four times so once again at the beginning of the loop we are moving to the register the first element of the list we push it to the stack we increment rdx and the next interaction of the list we are going to grab the second element eight bytes multiplied by one so it's it's plus 64 bits 64 bits it's exactly how much space we have registered for each number because we have used dq so each number takes 64 bits and then we repeat the operation okay it's not the full program but let's see if we haven't made any mistake and how it looks like in practice so we are going to compile it compile it in a very similar way just we need to change the name of the file from one basics to two basics here here and here okay and we can run it so okay and now we are going to use the debugger to see how the program is executed in the previous video we have used the debugger edb this is the user-friendly debugger good to start in this video we are going to use a little bit more advanced in use maybe that's the right word debugger which is gdb it, which is a gnu debugger I, I think it's the most popular debugger under the linux so we are going to gdb now the name of the file file start with two and then minus q q like quiet so we are going to avoid number of the information on the screen the screen will be more readable okay so now we have our program loaded debugger and what we are going what, what we want to do we want to execute line by line the same way as we would execute it in edb just it requires some writing so what we are going to do at the beginning we are we are going to set up the break break meaning execute the program till we are going to set up the break on our first function which is called start okay and now we are going to run our program and program has run only one line which is this one is setting the register rcx to number four we can check if this happened by info registers ir enter and we can see that the register rcx haven't been yet set of course to four because that's what's going to happen in the next instruction so we can go to the next instruction step e step instruction and we are going to see the registers now let's do like this so it will be more readable okay and now we see that our register is having the value four okay let's do one more step let's see how our registers looks like right now nothing yet happened one more step now our register rax should have the first value from the list so let's check it okay the the register rix is having the first value from the list let's do another step and maybe another step and few more steps let's see how the situation looks like right now in for registers so we see that rcx is free meaning we are going through the second interactions r the x is one if we will do one more steppy then the first register should have the value three meaning this is the second value from the list uh, let's get back to our source code to see what happened so now we are running the second interaction of the program and we read the second element of the list which we have placed in rax so seems that program is working there is one more interesting thing which we want to check meaning we have pushed the first value of rax to the stack it would be nice to check if the value actually is there to see if the value is there or not we are going to read a little bit from the memory under the register ssb register stack pointer by doing that we should see all the numbers we have pushed to the register as this moment of time we see only number one let's execute the code further to see if the program will work properly okay and let's read the memory one more time 
so if we read maybe let's clean it if we read our stack memory what we see on stack we see the elements from the list we see seven five three and one those are the elements from the list we have pushed to the stack so those are exactly the elements of this list in the reverse order so the first element is the element of, on the value 7 which was the last one on the list so looks like our program works as expected we can continue and finish it now we can, can come back to the program and what we can do is we can implement the second part of it meaning reading the values from the stack and saving them again into the variable list it will looks like very similar to our first loop so I will not explain everything in such a great details, but everything will be very much the same for interactions of the loop, for loops. Now we will set move at the x to zero, and now we are going to implement our pop loop, which will looks very similar pop loop inside of the loop we are going to pop element from the stack to the register rix and then move it to our list we will use a bracket because we are referring to the variables plus 8 bytes multiplied at the x and we are moving register rix and then we increment at the x so if everything will work as expected then the vari variable list will have the reverse order of the items let's compile our program okay we don't see any problem what we are going to do we are going to exit we're going to load it once again we are going to see the full program full code of the program and we are going to set a break on the line 26 so the break 26 and we are going to run the program so the program should stop after both loops the programs should stop here on the line 26 so after running the first one and the second loop so the variable should already have the reverse order of the items run and we can check how our variable lo list looks like or maybe at the beginning we can we can check how our stacks looks like so there should be nothing on the stack x d and again rsp okay so it seems that our items are not on the stack so now we are going to check our variable list and we are going to check if the elements elements are in the reverse order and yes this is our variable list and we see that the first number of the list is a number seven then five then three and then one it means that our very simple program using the stack push and pop works as expected okay excellent that was the first part of this episode the second one is way shorter we are finally going to write our hello world in the assembly i think that we are ready this is going to be a way shorter hopefully if we will not make any mistake so let's get started vim we can call it basics and uh, hello world the same extension the program template we already know how it should looks like so section text data and in the section data we are going to define our variable our string which we are which we want to print print on the ch on, on the screen uh, the variable name will be hello and the text will be hello word and dot and now section text global start and start and we are going to start by finishing the program so in order to close the program move value 60 to the register rix syscall so for the time being we were using the syscall 60 the syscall 60 is the 60 is the number of the function which is responsible for closing the program under the linux and windows there are different functions which do different things one of very basic function is the function which write on the screen which is under the syscall number one so if we want to write our variable hello to the screen what we need to do we need to move to rix 
RIX it's always the regi CPU register where we are placing the information about which Cisco we want to execute. We want to put the variable one, number one, and then to the register RSI, we want to put the address of our variable hello to be printed, hello, and execute a Cisco. Okay, in this way, we are informing the assembly that we want to write on the screen. We want to write the letters from this address and we are calling this function. Let's save it. Let's run it. Let's see how it works. We need to just change the name of the file. Hello world and the same here. Hello world and the same. Hello world. Okay, and of course it doesn't work because what we are doing, we are saying to the assembly that we want to write the letters under the address hello. We don't say yet where we are going to write it, where do we want to write it. So we need to inform the assembly that we want to write it to the RDE1, which is the screen. And we want to write 11 letters. Move RDX11, so it's 11 letters. And now it should work. We compile the program one more time, run it, and we have our hello world. So how do I know that I need to move one to the RDE or the 11 to the RDX? Every function, every syscall under every operation system like have its documentation. In the free books we have recommended in the previous episode, you can find the description of those syscalls. So you can find in those books the tables of the functions and the information what to put in which registers. The basic idea is that in RAX you are putting the number of the function you want to execute. Number one is the function write. And in other registers like in RDI or RDX, you put additional parameters. So this is the way you pass the parameters to that function in the assembly by putting them into different registers. And then you are calling the Cisco. That's it. So the knowledge from this episode and from the previous one, it gives us enough foundation to write our own shellcode. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.